Welcome back to the lab. Welcome back to EE for everyone. Today we're going to continue on our series of making making an ESD mat and person monitor. Yeah, that's a good name. Today we're going to continue our series of making the ESD mat monitor by stepping forward into the layout. So this will be the circuit board layout for that design. We're just gonna step through some of the things that we considered while making this layout, some of the trade-offs for sake of the size of the board or manufacturability or, or something. Uh, so we're just gonna walk through that all today and let's kick that off with a little time-lapse of the layout. Yes, so after a little bit of time, we find ourselves here at the layout of the circuit board. And let's talk through what we have. We have a four layer board. So there's a bottom copper layer, which is primarily a flood. There's an inner power plane, an inner ground plane, and a front copper layer. Being totally honest, this stack up only needs three layers. Well, maybe two and a half. <laughs> and why did we make it a four layer board? Well, ultimately what that comes down to, basically I took a look at some of these components and it was primarily the 12 volt rail. You can see that 12 volts is needed pretty much everywhere in this design. There is a lot of 12 volts. And that means that if we had to route a trace that actually connected all this, you can see we actually started routing traces to connect it all. And if we actually executed that, it would be a lot of work and it would blow up the layout. It would become huge. We wouldn't be able to lay it out like this. And so basically a uh, compromise that we made was switching to a four layer board to implement that without Swiss cheesing our ground plane. Because of course you could always use your bottom layer to route out and hop and skip and jump and add a thousand Vs to get that power where it needs to go. But ultimately that's going to come at the cost of a less ideal ground reference, because you're gonna need to cut up your ground plane. And so basically what I did is rather than leaving the bottom copper layer blank, <laughs> because it was basically going to be blank, uh, rather than leaving the bottom copper layer blank, what we did is flooded it with ground to give it a use. So now there'll be a ground plane on both sides of the power plane, which is not necessary. And there's a couple couple little jumps that we made to uh, make the routing work out. Basically what we did is we just did a five millimeter spacing right in a row. So it's power indication, mat high, low, operator high, low, and that's all lined up right on the front edge so that, right, that's meant to be the operator plug placed towards the operator. They'll be able to see all of the error indicators and then the mat and the power input is on the back where they wouldn't necessarily see. These two ICs, U302 and U202, these are the two comparators that are comparing the monitored signals, right? So you have the current source or the, the resistors, the current limiting resistors to the power rail coming in to the test, coming back, and we're monitoring the impedance between the test and ground. That's what we're measuring. And same thing for the mat. We have a couple resistor networks. This one sets the high and low threshold for the operator. These five set this up, uh, the equivalent threshold for the mat. And this is one of the trade-offs that we had to make 
Um, ideally, this 12 volt reference would be exactly the same as that one, which would be exactly the same as that one. But since these circuits are spread pretty far apart, if there's significant current flowing, you could get some shift or some error. This design isn't pulling more than a couple hundred milliamps and that's a lot of copper on the power plane. So I think we're gonna be just fine. But it's just something to keep in mind that this board reference of 12 volts needs to be about right. It needs to be constant at least, right? It doesn't need to be a specific voltage since everything's a resistor divider from the same voltage reference, but it needs to be the same across the board for that assumption to ring true. Other than that, the layout is pretty straightforward. Um, this was laid out with the thought of sliding into an enclosure and having primarily tabs that go on the top and bottom sides of the board. And then there's a couple mounting screws so that once it's slid in place, you can screw it down to really fix it. That could be pins, that could be all kinds of things. But I just threw in a couple mounting holes playing for an M2 screw one of the screw terminals, just because there might be some force there and the operator plug and the other one near the barrel jack, since that's the areas most likely to experience force. So then beyond that, all we've done is routed decoupling capacitance as you would expect, trying to route through where possible so that the decoupling cap is as close to the part as possible. There'd be a lot more compromises to talk about if I had stuck to my guns and done a two layer board. With a two layer board, this would actually be pretty brutal to lay out and keep it this size. I mean, looking at the size of what we have here, it's only 48 millimeters by 44 millimeters. That is pretty small, all things considered. About two inches by two inches is what that comes out to. Videos like this are always a little tricky for me because from my perspective, what we did was pretty straightforward, but if you've never done a layout before, it can be pretty daunting, but Thankfully, this video is not meant to exist in a vacuum, and there are many, many tutorials and reference materials for how to lay out a circuit board. This is just walking through a few of the design considerations for ours. That's all I really have because this is a very simple design. But if you like this video and you can't wait for more, let me know by hitting that like button, getting subscribed, or leaving a comment down below. A special thanks to our Patreon and YouTube channel members. I really appreciate the extra step that you've taken to support us directly. It really helps us out a lot. Thank you. Coming up soon, we'll be waiting for this hardware to come in. So we're gonna need to switch gears and talk about something else. I think we're gonna need to pick up either our amplifier or the inverter. So, hey, let me know down in the comments if you're excited for those series coming up. My bet is currently on the amplifier, but we'll see. Most of all, I hope that you learned something great today and I hope to see you again soon. So thanks for watching Eve for everyone and thank you for staying till the end. Bye.